today we're gonna break down your first basic open chords on the guitar, which ones you should learn, and there might be some in here that you haven't learned yet if you've already learned some open chords. So stay tuned to make sure that you go through all of it. Now for this, I have a resource for you. All you have to do is go to simpleguitar.com slash chords, and I have this download for you, a PDF of all the chords that we're gonna go through today. Looks like this. So if you wanna download that PDF, use that as we go through the video, that's gonna make your life a whole lot easier. So let's just dive right in. We're gonna start with the top four chords on this sheet. We've got simple G major chord. Now, if you don't know, whenever you see a chord name, if you just see a capital letter like G or C or D, that means we are playing a major chord. And throughout all the chords that we're doing today, we're gonna play three or four different types of chords. Major chords, minor chords, seven chords, which are also called dominant seven chords. And then we have a few other random ones thrown in there, like add nine and major seven and stuff like that. Now let's get started with the first four at the top of the page. We've got a simple G chord, a simple E minor chord, a simple C chord, and then your D chord, which there's not a simple version for that. It's just D, that's how it is. Now these first four chords are gonna be great if this is your first time learning open chords at all. These are a great place to start. Now, while we're talking about it, sometimes people freak out online and saying, oh, that's not a G chord. Yes, it is. This is a G chord. This is an E minor chord. This is a C chord, okay? We're just doing a simplified version to make it easier for you to play. Because here's the thing, I don't know who's watching this video right now. It could be somebody who's older and has a harder time with their hands. Could be someone who just doesn't have a lot of motor control with their fingers. And so we wanna make it easy for you to make these chords so that you can use them to make music. That's the whole goal behind this. The goal isn't to understand the chord and be able to play the perfect G chord that will satisfy everybody on the internet. The purpose is to make the G chord and then make music with it. Now, if you don't know how to read these chord diagrams, I will put a link in the description to a video that I did on how to read chord diagrams. If you need to pause this one, go watch that video and come back and finish, that's cool but we're just gonna dive right in. So let's go into simple G. For this simple G chord, we're gonna use your third finger and it goes on the third fret of your first string and that is it. Then you're just gonna use your pick and you're going to pick four strings. If you want to make sure that this is technically a G chord, you can do just three strings. But I just like that added sound of having that extra fifth in the bottom. Makes it a little bit richer, it's nice, right? Then your E minor chord, your simple E minor. I put third finger on the sheet for this, but you could use your second finger, I don't care. But it's your third finger on the fourth string, second fret like this, and you're playing four strings again here. Now the idea with this is to use your fingertip and to have it up enough, curled up enough, that you're not gonna touch your third string with that. So you're pressing down on the fourth string, but you wanna make sure that you're not touching the third string and muting it. So that means that you might have to move your finger a little bit and adjust it so that you can hear all those strings ring out nice like that. Now for your simple C chord, what we're gonna do is start with your first finger. And your first finger is gonna go on the first fret of your second string. So this one, we have to make sure it is really clean because your first string has to be open. Your second string, we have to hear that first fret. And then you're gonna have your third string open. And you could do just that if you wanna start with just that for your C chord. Just three strings. But then when we add your second finger to it, the same place that your E minor was at, that is the second fret of your fourth string, we get this. So now for your D chord, we're gonna use three fingers. So you're gonna have, let's start with your first finger. We're gonna put it on the second fret of your third string. Your fourth string is open. You've got your third finger on the third fret of your second string. And then your second finger is playing the second fret of your first string. Now, when you're new to this, that kind of feels like all three of those fingers are kind of crammed into a small space. But the more that you do this, the easier it is going to be for you to get that D chord down. Okay, now let's go on to our standard 
full G chord. Now, typically with these chords, there's four string, five string, or six string chords. And this full G chord is a standard G chord that everybody knows on the guitar. And this is a six string chord. So we're gonna start with our third finger, just like we had for our simple chord. But then you're gonna add your first finger on the second fret of your fifth string, and your second finger on the third fret of your sixth string. And then we have all six strings. Again, once you get your fingers in place, you wanna make sure that your fingers aren't touching any extra strings so that we can hear all six strings. So if you need to pick through all of the strings to make sure that they're sounding out clean like this, you just go. We wanna make sure that all of them are clean. We're not getting any that are like. That still sounds pretty good but we're missing some strings, so it doesn't sound as good. Now the next one is our G add five. Now technically, there's no such thing as an add five chord. This is just a designation that guitar players use to signify that what we're playing is different from our standard G chord. And so this next chord is the same as our regular G, but what we're gonna do is take your third finger, move it over to the third fret on your second string, and then put your pinky down on the third fret of your first string. Now that note that we just added by putting your third finger on the third fret of the second string is a D note, which is the fifth of a G chord. So that's why we're saying it's a G add five. We're adding an extra fifth as compared to your regular G chord. Does that make sense? So it's not technically a type of chord. There's nowhere else that you're like, oh, that's an add five. No, that's not such a thing. We're just using that as a de designation. This is technically still just a G chord. This is a G chord too, but they sound different because we have a different note, one different note in there. Now let's do your full C chord. If you already have your first and second finger from the simple C, then what we're gonna do is add your third finger which right here is gonna be on the third fret of your fifth string. And this is a five string chord, so leave your sixth string out. I let my third finger touch it, that way it mutes it. If I don't wanna hear that string, I can touch that string and mute it. So my third finger is actually pressed up against my sixth string, and that way I don't accidentally get Which will sound good in some instances, and we want that sound, right? Sometimes, because that note is part of the chord. But most of the time we want that C note that our third finger is playing. We want that to be the lowest note. Now for your full E minor. For your full E minor, we're going to do your second finger on the second fret of your fifth string and then your third finger on the second fret of your fourth string. And again, make sure that your fingers aren't touching any other strings because everything else is open. So we've got to make sure that all six strings ring out nice and clean and open. Next is your E major chord. Now, while you've got E minor, just take your first finger and put it on the first fret of your third string. And there you have. That makes it a major chord. So that way you can switch easily from major to minor, back to major, back to minor, whatever you need to do. Now we can take that same E major shape and we can just shift strings with it. Check this out. If I move all my fingers down towards the ground, one string this way, that means I'm gonna be playing in A minor if I play five strings. So I'm gonna start on my fifth string. And now that's an A minor chord, pretty cool, right? That's a good one to practice. You can change E to A minor. Now with your second and third finger where they are for your A minor chord, if we throw down your pinky on the second fret of your second string, that gives you an A major chord. Now check this out. I don't play my A chord that way. I cheat, I use one finger to lay across all three strings. I know that's really hard for some people, some people can cover two strings with a finger and then throw down a second finger to play that second string. 
whatever you got to do. You don't have to do it second, third, fourth finger or for first, second, third finger. You got to figure out what works for you. My fingers are way too fat to do it like this all the time, especially if I'm making bar chords. If I'm playing bar chords like this, it's so much harder to do that. So I just lay one finger down. Okay, whatever works for you is going to be what's important for that. Now check this out. If we lift up on our pinky from our A major chord and you move your third finger over to the second string. So now we're gonna play the third string open and still play five strings. So we're gonna play one, two, three, four, five. This is your A7 chord. So that is a seven chord or a dominant seven chord and that gives a totally different sound than just minor or major. Now we have seven. Very jazzy. Next up is our D minor chord. So we did our D chord, which was only four strings. Now we're gonna do D minor and here's how we do that. If you're making a D chord already, like I am right here, what you do is you take your second finger and you put it where your first finger is. And then you take your first finger and put it on the first fret of your first string. Now this is your D minor chord. It's the saddest chord. Okay, next is our D7. For D7, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your first finger on the first fret of your second string, your third finger on the second fret of your first string, and your second finger on the second fret of your third string. So again, they're kind of crammed in there. And then your fourth string is open. But that is your D7. Next, we have our E7 chord. Now check this out. Easiest way to do this is to make your E major chord. So get your first, second, and third finger in place for an E major chord. And then you lift up your third finger and play that fourth string open. You gotta make sure that's open. Now we're gonna do our C7 chord. For C7, you're gonna make your standard C chord, okay? But then you're gonna take your pinky, which hasn't been doing anything, and you're going to place it on the third fret of your third string. So normally in our C chord, that string's open, but now we're gonna add that note. And that's gonna give you your first four finger chord out of all these open chords that we're playing today. And then we're gonna do our G7. Now a G7, is kind of like a C. When I talk to students about this, I say it's kind of like somebody put a bomb in the middle of the C chord and blew it up because your first finger comes back to your first string on the first fret, and then your second and third finger scoot the other direction one string. So now you got your third finger on your sixth string, second finger on your fifth string, and first finger on your first string, and you get this G7. Pro tip, once you're comfortable with that G7, what I want you to try is take your pinky and put it down on the third fret on your first string. And that is an alternate fingering for your G chord. So if when we were going over G, you're like, what is the two, three, and four that are in parentheses? That's the alternate fingering for that. You want to be able to play your G chord with your first, second, and third finger and with your second, third, and fourth finger. Technically, you wanna do that with just about any of these, really. But getting comfortable with your G7 chord and then just throwing down your pinky is one of the easiest ways to get used to that alternate G fingering. Okay, now for B7. This one used to tangle up my fingers when I was learning this as a kid. It's your second finger on the second fret of your fifth string, your first finger on the first fret of your fourth, your third finger on the second fret of your third string, your second string is open, that's the hardest part, and then your pinky plays the second fret of your first string. And this is only five chords. Now, why would you need this? Because if you wanna play Hotel California, you gotta know that chord, because if you have a capo on your seventh fret, you're gonna end up playing that B7 chord all the way up here, right? And it's gonna sound great. It is a chord that doesn't get used a ton in songs today, but if you're playing any classic rock, any classic blues stuff, any old country, that B7 chord is gonna pop up. So it's good to have it under your fingers. Now these last four chords are ones that I thought were kind of just bonus chords. And so let's go over them really quick. The first one is your F major seven. Now, this is your first finger on the second string, first fret, your second finger on the second fret of your third string, and your third finger on the third fret of your fourth string. Now, 
If you play just those three strings, congratulations, that is an F chord. But if you add your open first string to it, that's an F major seven chord. Sounds super fancy. Makes it sound like you're very sophisticated, right? But it's a great step to get used to playing that and using either just the second, third, and fourth string for your F chord or playing the F major seven if you're not used to playing a full F chord yet because that one gives a lot of people a lot of grief. Next, we're gonna take the same shape but we're gonna do your first finger on the first string, second fret, your second finger on the third fret of your second string, and then your third finger on the fourth fret of your third string, and we're gonna play your fourth string open. And so now we're gonna get this. That is a B minor chord. That's the easiest way to play a B minor. And then these last two are just like our G add five that we did earlier. So if you think about that G add five, what we're gonna do for C add nine is just move your first and second finger down towards the floor one string and play five strings like this. One of the coolest sounding chords ever. And then your E minor is taking your first and second finger, your third and fourth stay in place from the C add nine or the G add five. And then we do this, right? Now that's all the basic open chords that I think is worth tackling in the beginning. Now here's the goal. With these chords, you need to memorize the name of the chord, you need to memorize the fingering for the chord, and you need to be able to change between them. So to do that, what you wanna do is actually go check out this next video about how to learn any new chord in only six minutes. I'm gonna show you how you can do that. You can use it for all of these chords, but the biggest thing is memorizing them and getting them down so that you can start to use them to actually play songs and music with them. So have fun. Thanks for watching today, guys. If you have a question about these, do leave a comment down below and I will see you in the next video about memorizing new chords.